we'll see what happens. All right, are we, is it recording now? Um, it says to request yes. permission again. Uh, I just did. Well, I think it is recording. Hmm. Yeah, I see recording. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, oh. it's flashing. Okay. So we'll see how that works. Yeah, thanks, Amber. Okay, nine minutes. Wow. Okay, let's talk about light. Right, essentially know about the different types of light, right? Basically, light is the same thing, um, whether it's gamma rays, x-rays, radio, infrared. The only difference between that is the frequency and wavelength, right? So it's all electromagnetic radiation. The difference is just wavelength and frequency. Now, the second line here, energy versus frequency, energy is proportional to frequency. So the higher the frequency of light, the more energy it has. So blue light has more energy than red light because it has a, high, has a higher frequency. So for the whole spectrum, what kind of light has the most energy? Gamma rays because they have, they have the highest frequency. Uh, least energy would be radio waves because they have the lowest frequency. So just know energy and frequency are proportional to one another. Uh, the third line here, the speed of light is always constant. So no matter what type of light, it all travels the same speed. So gamma rays, even though they have more energy, they travel the same speed as radio waves uh, with lower energy. And then the fourth uh, question, what kinds of things emit light? Anything with a temperature emits light, right? We're all emitting light right now because we're a body of matter that's at a certain temperature. And the type of light that gets emitted depends on the temperature. So hotter objects emit higher frequency light and more intense light. So right now, because we're at roughly room temperature, we're emitting infrared. But if we could be heated up, and if we could survive that, we can start to glow red, then orange, then yellow, then blue, then ultraviolet, and then finally X-ray and gamma ray. So really, really hot things will emit X-rays and gamma rays. Uh, relatively cool things will emit uh, infrared or um, even visible light. Uh, let's see, inverse square law, just know that brightness changes with distance, same as gravity. So if something is twice as far away, it's one quarter as bright. So the same law that governs gravity governs light. Different phases of matter. Well, as you heat up matter, the molecules in the material start moving faster and faster. And so things go from solid to liquid to gas. And if you heat a gas too much, it becomes a plasma. So the sun and the stars are way too hot to be solid, liquid, or gas. They're all plasma, which is basically a, a superheated gas. All right, so just another four different phases of matter. There's more phases of matter out there, but just the four major ones are the important ones for us. And most of the things we'll be studying, such as nebulae and stars, are made out of plasma. Right? It's super hot gas. Telescopes we're exploring in class this week. Uh, the basic types of telescopes, well, there's reflectors and refractors. Uh, reflecting telescopes use mirrors. Refracting telescopes use lenses. And both telescopes are similar in that they collect light and bring it to a focus. Whether you use a mirror or lens, same thing. You want to collect light and bring it to a focus. And when I say light gathering power here, I mean how much light does that telescope gather? And that depends on the area of the mirror. Right, so bigger telescopes collect more light, and it's proportional to the size of the mirror. Right, so because it goes to the area, right, pi r squared, if you have a one-meter telescope and a two-meter telescope, the two-meter telescope will collect four times as much light because it has four times the area of a one-meter telescope. Does that make sense? Can you do that? Okay. Uh, Telescopes at large observatories are almost always reflecting telescopes. The reason for this is because you can build a much larger mirror than you can lens, because you can support the mirror from behind. So they have telescopes now with mirrors 12 meters across, right? That's 40 feet across. So imagine a mirror that, that big. And they're designing telescopes that are 20 meters across. Enormous telescopes. Uh, but they all use reflecting, uh, reflecting mirrors to focus the light. 
Okay, spectra. Spectra are really important because they tell us what things are made out of. If you can analyze an object spectra, you can tell the elements that make up the spectrum. So in the lab last week, you looked at different emission lines, say for hydrogen, and you saw that hydrogen only emits at these certain wavelengths, like right? so a red, kind of a blue-green, and then like a purple wavelength. So continuous spectra is basically a rainbow, and that's the spectrum emitted by an object that has a certain temperature. Now the peak of that continuum tells you the temperature of the object, so that's why continuous spectra are very important. The hotter something gets, the further to the blue uh, the continuum peak is. The emission spectra are emitted by a hot, thin gas that's being heated up, and individual elements in that gas emit certain wavelengths of light. So hydrogen gas, when it gets heated up, emits wavelengths only a certain, uh, only, only certain bands of light. Absorption spectra are the opposite. When light from a distant object passes through a cool gas cloud, certain wavelengths get absorbed, and that produces an absorption spectra. Emission and absorption spectra are very important because you look at the lines that are present in the spectrum and it tells you what elements are present in that object. So that's how we know that the Andromeda galaxy, which is two million light years away, has hydrogen gas in it because we can see the, the, the lines from hydrogen in the spectrum. Okay. Uh, what else? Black body, continuum spectrum. Basically, the peak wavelength of the rainbow or the continuum is the temperature. So you can use spectra to determine temperature. Hot stars emit uh, more light and bluer light. So the hotter the star, the brighter and bluer it is. Atoms and energy levels, we don't spend a whole lot of talking about this, but basically when electrons change uh, levels inside atoms, they emit photons of a certain wavelength. Okay, Doppler shift, really important. And the Doppler shift is the change in an object spectrum caused by its motion towards or away from the observer. So for example, if an object's moving towards you, the spectral lines in an object spectra are shifted towards red wavelengths, or I mean blue, wave, blue wavelengths. If it's moving away from you, it's shifted towards red wavelengths. So you measure the shift, you see whether it's shifted towards red or blue, and you can determine what direction that object's moving and also how fast it's moving. All right, so Doppler shift is very important because it tells you direction and speed. All right, so if you ever got a speeding ticket, that's because of the Doppler shift, right? The radar gun that the police uh, have bounces a radio wave off your car. If it's coming towards them, the radio waves will be blue shifted. The radar, the radar gun measures that and determines your speed. So Doppler shift has lots of uh, applications on Earth as well. Doppler radar for weather. They're basically bouncing radar waves off clouds and determining velocities that way. So, but that's what Doppler shift is. It's shift caused by uh, relative motion. Okay. That's a quick and dirty overview. But any any questions at this point? Anything that people are fuzzy about or want to hear more about? I'm kind of, I'm kind of rushing a little bit because I see we only have one minute left. I may have to upgrade to the paid version of Zoom for next time. Um, but last minute questions? Okay, was this helpful, meeting online? Good, we'll, we'll try it again. And people give me feedback about how often you want to do it. If you want to do it every other week, we could do that. We could do it just before exams. Uh, I'm, I'm flexible, I'm open to it. Just to have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Just so if we can do it like early at 9 o'clock, like at 7. Yeah, we, we can try and we can try to do, do different times. And also this day didn't work for everyone e either. So we'll try a different day next time. We'll try a little bit earlier too. So yeah, we'll try to find the best uh, the best time that works for everybody. Okay? Thank you. All right. We've we've got only uh, a few seconds left. I think it's going I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, maybe we'll kick us off. Uh, let me stop the recording here. I'll see what happens.